Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we will be taking a look at the IMAP protocol and how to use it to access our emails, to develop different projects, or to analyze data from our emails. This video is the first part of a short series that aims to look at IMAP protocols and how to use it to extract emails to then apply a summarization algorithm or other natural language processing tasks. This video will be divided into three main parts. First, we will be looking at an overview of IMAP protocols. Then, we will look at the workflow and installation. And finally, we take a look at the code. So, what is IMAP? In computing, the Internet Message Access Protocol is an Internet Standard Protocol used by email clients to retrieve email messages from a mail server over a TCP IP connection. IMAP, which was first proposed in 1986, is an email retrieval protocol which has the ability to read emails and display them. IMAP is one of the many internet protocols for email. Another is POP, or P-O-P, or Post Office Protocol. POP is an application layer internet standard protocol used by email cl clients to retrieve emails from a mail server. Today, POP version 3, POP3, and IMAP are one of the most common protocols for email retrieval. But which one is more suitable for our application? IMAP allows you to access your email wherever you are, from any device. When you read an email using IMAP, you aren't actually downloading or storing it onto your computer. Instead, you're reading it from the email service. As a result, you can check your email from different devices anywhere in the world, your phone, a computer, a friend's computer. IMAP only downloads a message when you click on it, and attachments aren't art automatically downloaded, and this way you're able to check your messages a lot more quickly than POP. Whilst POP works by contacting your email service and downloading all of your new messages from it, once they're downloaded onto your PC, they are deleted from the email service. This means that after the email is downloaded, it can only be accessed by the same computer. IMAP and POP are two methods to access email. However, IMAP is the recommended method when you need to check your emails from several, several def different devices, such as phones, laptops, and tablets. And since in our case, we just want to retrieve emails without completely downloading them from our mail server, and we would like to check our emails from different devices later on, the method of choice that this video will take is the use of IMAP. In this video, we will be using Google Collab. And as our IMAP protocol, we will be using a specific library in Python called IMAPLib. But first and foremost, we must enable IMAP. To do so, we must follow two main steps, enabling IMAP and creating an app password. To, to enable your IMAP in your Gmail account, open your computer and open your Gmail. In the top right corner of your screen, you should see the settings and click on the settings. After clicking onto your settings, click on see all settings. This should, this should take you to a page that displays all your settings. Click on the Forward and Pop IMAP tab. In the IMAP access part of the settings, select Enable IMAP. Scroll down and save your changes. Now for your own app per password. To create your own app password, click on Manage your account settings. Click on your account and manage your account settings. And click on your security tab. Scroll down and click on the two-step verification. Of course, you must enable your two-step verification for this to work. After enabling your two-step verification, scroll down and at the bottom of the page, select app passwords. Make sure you Enter a name that can help you remember the password that you will be using. And since I will be using this for my own Gmail account, I named my app password Gmail. Then it will automatically generate and create a 
a password for you. So click on create and save the password you've generate, they've generated for you. Now, now that we're done, we can use the app password that we've just generated to connect to our email via IMAP. So let's look at the flowchart of the code. First and foremost, we must install and import the necessary libraries. Then, after installing and importing the necessary libraries, we will connect our email via IMAP. And we will load our emails. In our next video, we will perform the NLP task on our imported emails. So let's go ahead and look at the code. So jumping over to the code, we can see that we need to first and foremost import the libraries and necessary packages. We of course need the IMAP li library to use the IMAP protocol, and we need the following libraries such as string, codex, regex for later on when we will be performing natural language processing tasks and email. So after importing the necessary libraries, we will be connecting to our email. And this can be done with creating an IMAP for SSL class instance. And since we're trying to connect to gmail.com, then we would need to use imap.gmail.com. If Outlook, then this would, be need, this would need to change to outlook.com. Then through the app password that we've just generated, after connecting to our email, let's use the imap.list to retrieve all the list of all mailboxes in the authenticated Gmail account. The first index of the list contains OK, whereas the second index is a tuple containing the mailbox name, delimiter, to separate the hierarchy in the mailbox names and attributes. We can see we have the inbox, we have all our mail, we have our trash bin, our drafts, our important, sent mail, spammed, and starred. If you have other folders within your email that you'd like to access, you can find it here. So let's say we'd like to look at our inbox and more specifically our unseen or unread emails. To do so, we must first select the inbox mailbox, since these are the mailbox that we have inside our Gmail. Let's select the inbox, since this is the file that we're trying to search, and try to retrieve all the messages and the statuses through using imap.search and specifying that we would like to only search for the unseen or retrieve all the unseen data. Then let's iterate over each of these messages that we've just imported to retrieve their contents. And we will do and we will be doing that through using the imap.fetch function or method and, and uh, using uh, the RFC822 parameter. We've written that to specify that this is the format that we will try to retrieve our messages in. And this format is helpful because it allows for the extraction of the email or the importing of the email with its header items that are important for any task, such as dates, the subject of the email, and these are things that we would like to import. So we will be using this format, we will be specifying this format for the IMAP to fetch our emails in. And then through using the messages or message from bytes of the email library that we've just imported, we will import the email that uh, through Passing the, passing the RFC 822 email format that has been encoded in, into a byte, as a byte and returning a string from it. This string will contain the header information such as the to, who was the email sent to, who was it from, and the subject, the name, the, the date I mean, and body of the whole email and attachments if there are any attachments. In this video, we are trying to print out the subject, the from, and the date of the emails that we have unseen in our inbox. Therefore, uh, in this part of the code, we retrieve the subject field from the email message, where the subject field contains the subject of the email. We then decode 
the subject header. Email headers can be encoded in various ways, especially when they contain non-ASCII characters. Therefore, decode underscore header function decodes the header into a list of decoded strings. We then extract the decoded st the string, we extract it into our, our variable subject to later on print it out with, with its decoded, uh, with it being decoded. We also print the sender of the email through the use of the message object that we've created, as well as the date. In our next video, we will be taking a look at how we can use natural language processing to pre-process or to even just process the emails that we've retrieved using the IMAP protocol. Thank you for watching this video. And if you found it useful, consider subscribing to my channel. Or if you'd like to support me, you can do so through Patreon, which you can find in the description below. This video is based off the Medium article that is linked in the description below. And you can also find the code in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video. And as always, thank you for watching.